gamers and welcome back. I'm Rob, of course, at Warshack, if you want to call me by my in-game name. We're going to be continuing on with our neutral legendary disenchant guide. I'm going to be going over all of currently the neutral standard format legendary minions, uh, whether or not you should disenchant these cards, and um, if there's a couple cards that you do need to craft because they are very popular and they fit into a bunch of different decks. We've already done our class legendary guys uh, guide. If you want to check that out, the uh, link to that should be in the description. But let's head on over to the cards themselves. Uh, we've got Patches of Hulahan here coming in real hot. Uh, he's found in so many different decks at the moment, whether it, um, it's aggro, some form of mid-range decks, the pirate package. Even if it's only running uh, two South Sea Captains and Patches, which is a called the pirate package it's really only three to four cards uh is really powerful and really popular i mean it's one of the strongest three mana plays you can make right now is to go uh into like let's say prince and then south sea captain to supply you know a two two or it actually be a three three from your deck even if you're just playing captain on three and it's coming out as a two two charger it's still insane value um so one of the in my opinion one of the best cards in the meta right now and it's why the deck uh, why the package is played so much and through it's played in priest it's played in shaman it's played in warrior <laughs> it's played in rogue it's played in druid every deck is basically the same kind of tempo deck that runs patches and the south sea captains shifter uh this card is really never seen so okay so i forgot do not disenchant and if you want to play any form of aggressive deck you have to have them <laughs> sorry i didn't say that uh shifter it's always been kind of just like a meme -y card he transforms into a different thing every turn and it's basically basically the possibilities are endless never really uh saw play and is more of just kind of a fun meme -y card than he is a competitive card a blood mage a uh, really good card and found in a sizable amount of decks whether it's rogue mage uh was found in warlock for a little bit of time there sometimes found in druid just the fact the plus one spell damage and draw a card for only two mana is really powerful plus it's part of the classic set so you can't really go wrong with crafting this card because it fits in so many different decks and along with that it's never rotating out so you're in, you're investing into something that's going to be there for a long time uh lore walker cho has always proven to be pretty like he's just you can disenchant this card you don't have to worry about it uh milhouse man storm actually had a golden one but i disenchanted him because i needed dust but either way you don't need this card at all the battle cry enemy spells cost zero this turn <laughs> getting ultimate infestation on turn two feels really bad uh nat pagel actually used to be really good they nerfed him and then they haven't changed him back um at the time of when this guy was good it said at the end of your turn you have a 50 percent chance to draw a card and at that time turn two dealing four damage was really almost impossible um due to the fact that most cards like the most powerful turn one play you had was flame imp that was like double flame imp on turn one was like super powerful now it's just like oh okay that's normal <laughs> so um not good you can disenchant and then dark fisher was found in some mill decks but at the moment he's actually not found in any mill decks um due to the fact that the the mill decks require a certain amount of cards to per, uh, pull off a certain combo and at the moment this guy's just not part of it you can disenchant him don't worry about it uh moving along to prince this was actually it's interesting because cards like the prince weren't actually considered until towards the end of this last expansion on uh, knights of the frozen throne he was like this card wasn't played basically all in the first month like nobody people were playing the jade druid the big druid uh, big big uh big priest and stuff like that but no one was actually running this tempo rogue and then asmo was playing it and he ran prince and then all of a sudden after asmo played it the deck blew up you know it's tempo rogue is now seen everywhere and it's uh, just part of the core meta right now and, and it wasn't that it wasn't like that the first month into the uh, expansion so you can see like cards like prince that kind of like sneak their way in there because people originally thought this card was really bad and then all of a sudden he popped up and he was one of the most powerful cards in the set so obviously craft this guy if you're looking to play any form of a uh, tempo deck um or i should say prince deck you know you got prince rogue there's even prince um there's Prince uh, with its Pirate Warrior, and then you have the new Prince Priest that's out. Um, so, uh, and then uh, Zoo Lock plays it as well. So it's just a ton of decks that run Prince. Good craft, good craftable card, uh, and do not disenchant. Uh, auction it, au this guy fits in <laughs> Auction Master Beardo. There we go. Uh, fits into OK OTK Paladin, but that's about it. You can disenchant him. Uh, King Mukla, disenchant. Moros, you can disenchant. Prince, uh, originally I would say disenchant, but he actually fits into the 
uh, Warlock deck right now, the Cube Warlock or Control Warlock, because you don't really run very many three drops. If like the, basically you wouldn't run any if you're gonna play this card, and then you would basically battle cry and you would turn this guy into a Void Walker. That's the key. Or you turn him like let's say you Carnivorous Cube a Doom Guard and then you uh, Prince and then hit the cube and then you get two more Doom Guards. So it's like a really really good card if there's a powerful card on the board like Death Rattle like the Void Lord and or Cube. But not a necessity. He is only found in that one particular deck. I guess you also could play him in your combo Malagos Druid. But again, that's not that popular of a deck. So it's pretty safe disenchant. He's not a staple by any means, but he's not as bad as he was. Uh, Sergeant Sally, you can disenchant. It used to be pretty good with like your Warlock. You could go Sergeant Sally, power overwhelming her. And then at the end of the turn, she'd explode and deal all that amount of damage to everything. But now she's not that big of a deal. Uh, Tink Master... It used to be actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, but at the moment, you can disenchant him. You don't have to worry. Zola the Gorgon. It, okay, so this was one of the new Quest Rogue pieces. If you watched our class legendary disenchant guide, I mentioned that Quest Rogue is actually pretty good. And it got a lot of tools. This was one of the tools that it got uh, to be able to choose a friendly minion and ca copy it. Uh, which is, it has a lot of bounce backs effects. But at the moment, with it going from four bounce backs to five that it needs, uh, getting an extra card that does some form of copy and or bounce back is actually really, really good for the deck. So, um... I wouldn't recommend disenchanting her if you have any intention to play uh, the quest warlock or quest rogue, but um, if you have no intention, she's a safe DE. Uh, Arphis, you can safely DE. Paying four mana for a 2-2 two -two to get a random death knight card is not really good enough, and it doesn't really fit into any deck at the moment. Barnes definitely don't DE, fits into a ton of decks, whether it's big druid, um, big priest, uh, tempo rogue sometimes fits into zoo he just fits into a bunch of different decks and fits into a shaman as well so it's just a very powerful card if you end up high rolling uh, i would definitely not disenchant him uh, genzo you can disenchant don't you worry uh for the stats he's really good but unfortunately at the moment he just doesn't as good as his effect and cool as it is he doesn't fit into any deck at the moment kazakis do not disenchant uh fits into a variety of different decks warlock priest and mage to be exact uh Priest being the most powerful out of all those to play Kazakus in due to the fact that you have Highlander Priest. We mentioned that in our Legendary Disenchant video. You know, it's just one of the core cards in the deck, and it's actually one of the best decks in the meta. Uh, we have Prince Valinar. This was uh, originally played last expansion in uh, Prince uh, uh, Miracle Rogue. It was sometimes found in Tempo Rogue because you don't run a lot of four-cost cards. But at the moment, he's not really played in anything because you can just play Sherizen instead of this guy. And I think Sherizen's a lot better. And plus, then you have the ability to run other four-cost cards. So, And uh, on top of that, Miracle Rogue is never, never going to play this card anymore because you have that new four-mana uh, four uh, add uh, four spiders to your deck and if you, you know you draw them you get the spiders so this card is actually just turned into basically nothing uh you can disenchant that guy no problem uh spirit uh, umbra is actually found in cube lock surprisingly um because you can cube something and then the cube will actually trigger the death rattle right, right away so not only are you getting the cubes death rattle right away uh, but you also get the cube when it does pop but the problem is that cost nine mana it's a very late game uh combo and it really she only fits in that one deck you could play her in a death rattle deck but she's really slow it's one of the cards that you don't really play on turn four unless you have nothing else to do and you're playing against like a tempo deck um but for the most part it's a very late game card and it's found in very particular very specific decks and those decks necessarily aren't that popular or powerful unless you're talking about the cube block but you could actually run the cube block without her and it'll be okay so uh, it's kind of up to you on her um she's not bad but she's not overwhelmingly powerful the darkness <laughs> so this guy's kind of funny because he's not really that good at all um you know you look at four mana 20 20 you freak out but then you it shuffles three candles in your opponent's deck and when they draw them that you finally get this card so the chances that your opponent draws those three candles in the first even half of the game is so unlikely plus this takes up a card like you played four mana and you're not getting anything until like 10 to 15 turns down the line so the only reason you play this card is to counter deck. So if you find yourself playing a lot of Raza Priest or Highlander Priest, if you add three candles to your opponent's deck, that means they can't actually play Raza because they have duplicate cards in their deck, which are the candles. So I'm currently playing this in my Control Mage deck because I'm sick and tired of fucking Priest. So I want to play the Darkness, and then they end up playing Raza because they forget the candles that are in their deck, and then they lose their combo piece with the Raza Anduin. So they end up having to always pay two for their Anduin. So... It's kind of like not the best of cards. It's more of a counter card. If you really hate Priest, you can keep this card. But besides that, you can disenchant him. You don't have to worry about it. Just figured I'd add that for those of you who hate Priest as much as me at the moment. 
Uh, the Vorax never really saw a play. Not a bad card, but just never really saw a play. It has a really cool ability, um, but it's just not, never, never really, like, if you play this in Paladin, I don't know, buff Paladin, I mean, this would be pretty fucking good. You could play, like, Barnes and then get Vorax and then Kings it, and then you get, you know, a 7-7 seven, seven and a 5-5. Five, five. Seems good, but regardless, didn't see play. You can disenchant it. Um, green skin is found in Pirate Warrior. Really good at the moment. In my opinion, there's the new recruit pirate warrior out there that runs the woe cleaver and you can actually cap and green screen the rogue woe cleaver so then it turns into a four four you get an extra charge and it does more damage i would not disenchant captain green skin a lot of these cards um are powerful because they're part of the classic set and they're not really going anywhere so um at least good card do not disenchant it's found in a lot of control decks and uh, the pack is especially powerful towards the end of the game because not only it adds another card to your deck that pack opens up into five cards and those five cards are normally pretty good so a great control based card finn just found in uh, murloc paladin at first i didn't really like finja at all i didn't run him in my murloc paladin and then i continued to get destroyed by people playing finja and i wasn't playing finja and what makes this card really good um is the spike ridge steed so you play finja on five it has stealth they can't kill it and then you spike ridge steed it on seven all of a sudden it turns into a five ten <laughs> that has taunt and you probably can kill something and it's going to summon two more locks most of the time it's going to be a war leader or maybe um a tide caller and both of those are high targets but you can't actually kill those because you have this giant fucking fish in the way and then after that fish you're going to have to deal with a steed so it's just a really really powerful card in regards to like any sort of murloc deck there actually used to be it used to be called the water package and you'd run two war leaders and stuff when war leader wasn't nerfed down to just to give your murlocs plus uh, one one it was actually two one no it was Currently, it's plus two attack, but it used to be plus two one. And the one was huge because the uh, getting an extra health mean that all of your cards, all your Murlocs with three HP could live through cards like Hellfire and Defile made Flame Strike a little bit more awkward. So it was just a really powerful card. But either way, good card. I wouldn't disenchant. Harrison Jones, again, uh, really good. Uh, based on the meta is when this guy pops in and out. Like right now, I think in the next couple weeks, this card is going to see a substantial amount of play. Then you see a lot of Harrison Jones. You see a lot less weapons. You see a lot less weapons. Harrison Jones leaves the meta, and then weapons come back, and when Harrison Jones comes, out, home, comes back. So it's just based on the meta. Really good card. I do not recommend disenchanting just because, again, he's part of the classic set, and he's not going anywhere. Leroy Jenkins, again, follows the same path. Classic set. Really good card. And any form of, like, combo-based burst deck. Um, you know, Miracle Rogue with Cold Bloods. Tempo Rogue with Cold Bloods. Sometimes found in Tempo Mage if you're a real dickhole <laughs> and uh sometimes found in zoo again if you're a real you know penis head uh prince you can disenchant you don't really have to worry about this guy he's not that powerful uh aya really good card for jades if you have any intention of playing any jade deck whatsoever you have to have aya she's just like so incredibly powerful uh karen bloodhoof again really good in death rattle really good in value decks who's actually found in tempo rogue for a long time because karen on six bone mirror into seven is like one of those combos that Karen is card, hard to remove because he has death rattle and it's going to summon another dude. So you got to kind of kill two four fives on turn six. It's really hard to do that if you don't have board. Most of the time you don't have board because you're playing against Tempo Rogue, which strives to obtain the board. Um, so it's just a really good card. Again, part of the classic set. Hemet, only found in really meme decks. You don't really need to play this card. You don't really have to have this card. You can just enchant him. Hogger, again, cool card. Not really that powerful, not any core part of any deck. I have him on my free-to-play account in every single deck I have because he's just my first legendary and it's my free-to-play account, so I don't give no fucks, but not a bad card, but it's not a good card. You can just enchant him. Uh, Illidan, again, he's finally a demon. Good job, Illidan. You made it to the demon rack. <laughs> For six mana, seven, five, he's got a pretty hefty... If he was a five, seven, he'd actually see play. And I don't know why they don't make him a 5-7. And then he would be found in demon lock, and that'd be pretty cool. Um, but besides that, he's not really that great. But he may see play in the future, to be honest, because the new weapon pulls demons out of your hands. So a free Illidan does not seem that bad. So you pull Illidan out and you play a bunch of shit, you get a bunch of two ones. But at the moment, there's like no OTK with Warlock. If there's ever a going to be an OTK with Warlock again, where you can like buff demons or like get your demons to have charge, like that'll be insane. But again, if you I guess if you have Illidan or I guess if you have Illidan, you should probably keep him. Hoggers, you don't care about that guy, but like Illidan, you should probably keep that guy. He's cool. Uh, Madame Goya, you can disenchant. She's only found in particular decks, and those decks really aren't that good. Uh, Mukul the Tyrant of the Veil is actually found in the 
old version of Exodia Mage because you could add two bananas to your hand and they would actually combo with your quest. Uh, but you can run the deck without Mukla. Again, it's my example that I used in the previous episode with the legendary class chant that if you can play two cards, one of them is like a common or rare and the other is a legendary, you should probably just play the common or rare that does exactly the same thing as the legendary because then you get to disenchant the legendary to get the dust. You need to craft other cards for other decks you want to build. So follows the same rule under that. Uh, the beast, you can disenchant the card just sucks. Uh, Black Knight, core set, cool ability. If taunts it, when taunt uh, warrior was really popular, and even with bone mare still, you know, you get a raw, you get a lot of good Black Knight targets. So you could just tech this card in your deck. Fits into almost any deck. You know, you could play him in your uh, priest deck. You could play him in your mage deck. You could play him in your, you know, druid deck. He's just a good card, but especially with bone mare being as popular because bone mare gives creatures taunt. Uh, Rathodon, shitty card. You can disenchant. Never really saw play. Baron, cool card. Used to be found in the Control Warrior. Uh, currently hasn't been found in a staple in any deck recently besides the Control Elemental Mage deck. Uh, at the moment, I didn't even play Baron in my Control Elemental Mage, even though he like heals me for a shit ton. I don't really need to be healed for a shit ton because we have Jaina. Jaina gives all my Elementals lifesteal. If I'm hoping that Baron does it and all the Elementals I played don't, I probably played the matchup wrong. Uh, Don Hancho. Ugh, just a sad, pitiful excuse for uh, one of the gang leaders. Kazakus, I mean, how do you compete with like Kazakus when you print like you have Kazakus or this guy? Like, how do they even like? Or how is this guy even a gang leader when he's going against Kazakus? Kazakus is like just so good, and this guy's just such a piece of shit. Uh, Hogger, you can disenchant. Uh, he was actually pretty good against Cthulhu a long time ago, but that again, a long time ago, you can disenchant. Curator actually used to be found in the Murloc Paladin for additional draw. It actually used to be found in Control Paladin for additional draw. It also used to be found in, there's one more deck that it used to be pretty good in. Uh, oh, uh, Taunt Warrior. So pretty good. I wouldn't recommend disenchanting the Curator just because he's found in a variety of different decks and uh, he's a great draw mechanic. Oh, why are you yawning, Rob? Take a sip of coffee. Stay alive. All right, we're good. Good card, don't disenchant. Uh, Twin Emperor Vecklor, Cthulhu decks. If you ever want to play Cthulhu, this is a must-have in your deck. So if you're going to play Cthulhu, it's a must-have, but Cthulhu is not is it's not very good anymore, unfortunately. The power level, of, it's just the power level of a lot of these cards are just like so. As the expand, as we get farther away from a freshly baked rotation, the power level of cards go up. Once the rotation hits and stuff is taking out, taken out of the standard uh, format, the power level of cards go back down. So like right now we're at the peak of the power level. Like right now the power level of all cards in the game are going to be exceptionally high. But once this next expansion gets released in four months from now, the power level of cards will be very much so diminished because it's going to lose out on the three expansions of the last two years, which incre have increased the power level thus far that combo with the current sets that they're out. So, with that long explanation, Emperor Vecklor, you can disenchant him. <laughs> Gruel, you can disenchant him. He's a piece of shit. Uh, King Tog Woggle. Um, it's found in a meme deck to destroy your opponent's decks. How competitive the deck? It's not very competitive, but the card is fun and interactive if you like, you know, playing meme decks. So, I don't want to tell you to disenchant a cool card, but at the same time, if you're looking for strictly the best decks to play and um, you're wanting to play decks that actually win... You can disenchant him, and you're not really losing out. Martin the Fox is pretty cool. It's a, you know, I don't, you can't, I don't think you even can disenchant him, but he's a cool card. Uh, Medivh, definitely don't disenchant. Found in a bunch of different decks. Warlock, Mage, Priest, sometimes. Um, Druid, it's a good card. Uh, the Boogie Monster, piece of shit. You can get rid of him. I wish they would have made this card a little bit better because his picture is really, really cool. Um, I can imagine his ability whenever your opponent plays a minion, get plus two, plus two. That'd have been really cool. Uh, Lich King, really good card. I would not disenchant. He's found in uh, Big Druid, found in Big Mate, or <laughs> Big Druid, uh, Big Priest, uh, Big Druid. Uh, he's found in some Warlock decks, found in uh, some Rogue decks, some Tempo Rogue decks. I even play him in my Zoo deck just because I figured uh, Zoo is literally the same thing as Tempo Rogue. It just has a different hero power. <laughs> uh, so... Good card. I would do not recommend disenchanting the Lich King. Alex draws a part of the core set. <clears throat> part of the core set and been a core card to a lot of decks like Mage for a long time now. I recommend do not disenchant this card. And if you want to play Mage to Crafter. Malagos, again, part of the core set. I would not recommend. It, it, the reason I say core set, which means it's never rotating out for as far as we know, as of I know, as of now. Um, so it's like you can't go wrong crafting these cards because these cards are good in a couple different decks. 
and then when the new set comes out they'll be getting a couple more different decks and the new set comes out they'll be getting a couple more different decks and um it's just they have a they have the lifespan of forever and you just can't go wrong with that because eventually they're going to see play somewhere and the deck's going to be cool or good so uh master oak card is found in a couple different decks i personally don't really like this card um the fact because of the fact that you're paying nine nine you're paying nine mana for a piece of shit you know five five nine mana is really bad uh you get to recruit cards out of your deck the one two and three but the problem is if you draw those cards prior to the battle cry going off so let's say you're playing this in your warlock deck and you want to bring out your void lords all right and your uh your lackey dude you know your five mana two two already pulled both void lords from your deck and then you play a master oak cart and it literally pulls like one card that's really bad <laughs> and then he's been sitting in your hand all game so there's been actually a huge decrease in people playing this card because they finally realized the card's actually not as good as they thought but i really think there is a deck that hasn't been thought of yet that will play this card and it will be good but as of now it's just not that great so i wouldn't go out of your way to craft this card but i wouldn't disenchant him yet just in case something does pop up uh noggin farger is kind of just a meme card you can just chant him norse doomu again kind of meme card you can just chant him anixia not a bad card you know if you're a free-to-play player you open anixia up you can fit her in your like druid deck and you get a savage drawer off full of, because you get a full field full of one one whelps it's not bad um but if you're looking for other core cards and like decks i would disenchant her uh Orzrock always yeah, i've never liked this card i think they could have printed a lot better elemental neutral for nine mana uh so he's a piece of shit you can disenchant him despite a blizzard for making shitty legendaries uh so i got the slither uh he used to be actually pretty good again the power level of cards have reached a point where he's just not that great i uh, can't be targeted by hero powers or spells is literally the only reason that makes this card any significant threat whatsoever five nine is pretty good if he was like a five twelve he actually might see play uh, but the problem is that he's kind of easy he's too easy to kill like if someone like bone mare is a four four or fire a five attack minion he can just trade into this nine drop and then you're just not in a good spot there's nothing that can easily bring this guy out you know you could play recruit warrior and you gotta get him out on turn six but even a, like a, a six mana five nine like is good card but like right now there's a six mana six nine <laughs> and it has taunt it can it can be targeted by spells and hero powers but you can't even hero power in the same turn as you forgot so this should have been like eight man I'm, I'm trying to fix cards over here not to tell you you can dem don't worry about it <laughs> i'm trying to fix the cards now instead of telling you if you should disenchant them or not yes yeah, sarah is a great card uh she's always been a really powerful dragon and it's found in a variety of different control decks uh definitely keep her uh Cthune, got him for free uh deathwing um I mean, he's only really found in one deck right now, and that's Big Druid. You don't really see this guy in any other deck, but he actually used to, you'd play this guy in um, your Tempo Dragon Warrior. That used to be a thing, and this guy was actually a staple in that deck. So, um, I don't recommend disenchanting him, just because of the fact that he's a neutral. He's going to be here for a long time, and there could be a deck that he works out with, plus he's a great oh shit button. You know, you're playing a deck, and they go all in, and they never, no one ever plays around Deathwing. You drop this bad boy, you scare the shit out of your opponents. Deathwing Dragon Lord. Uh, it's found in Big Druid and Big Warrior, and that's it. And it's really expensive. So if you're a free-to-play player and you get this card, you can disenchant it because you're never going to be able to afford, like, 15 legendaries in one deck. I'm just kidding. It's not 15. It's, like, 7, but still super expensive. Uh, Nazoth, really good. Don't disenchant. Uh, there's tons of good, cool Nazoth decks that you can build. You know, Druid, Priest, Warrior, um, Paladin, so shaman just a ton of decks you can play this guy and he's good yog uh you can disenchant yog he used to be really he used to be really good and he used to be found in most decks but now that um after he dies the effects of yog stop made him a lot less powerful and um he's kind of just a meme card so you can kind of just people play him just for the you know the cool shit he can possibly do but he's not necessarily a staple in any deck and then we have rage this guy is found in all the big decks. So again, when you hear me say big decks, it, the decks revolve around playing just giant, really expensive, almost all legendary minions. If you're a free-to-play player or a new player, you've got months of grinding until you even come close to being able to think about building one of these decks. Um, and if you're not a free-to-play player, then you obviously know what I'm talking about, and then you can kind of make the decision on what if, if you want to play a big deck or not. For, but for newer players, you don't need to make a big deck. You can disenchant Rage. Um but you know if you if you really like those big decks and you can afford to you know have anywhere between you know five to eight legendaries in your deck along with many other epics go ahead and uh, best of luck uh so with that thanks for watching uh i will catch you in the next disenchant guide which will be going over epic cards um 
If there's anything I left out, if you want to elaborate on anything I mentioned so far, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I try to make these as fast and as formative as possible, which means I can't cover everything I want to, but I kind of cover, at least I try to cover what I think is the most important um, things to pull about each card. So with that, thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode. Of course, I'm Robert Warshak, and happy to over the hell day it is.